to respond to, I ask for up, I ask for down, and have it be where it's, you know, clear in his mind that that is what you're asking for. Because right now we've just convinced him, you know, I know it feels like I'm asking you to walk, but I'm really not. You know, so now we're going to say, but now I am going to ask you for the walk, and I want to make sure that you can hear me. So it's going to be different in your seat, because your seat shouldn't have changed when you were asking for the trot to maintain the trot. Your seat, your seat should have kind of stayed in a trotting position. Now you're going to ask for the walk, settle, then ask for the trot, stay asking for the trot, and then if he breaks into the walk, say, hey, I didn't say that. My body's still going forward. And then when you get back up to the trot, then when you decide, ask for the walk again, and then just keep playing with that up and down and see if he, if you'll start to notice that you'll get snappier departures every time you ask for, every time he feels you elevate, he's going to be like, oh, it's the trot. If he sees you sit, he's going to be, oh, it's supposed to walk. And he'll figure, figure out that he's supposed to follow your body more than he's supposed to follow any kind of physical get up and go. And I would not ask for the walk across the fence. I'd ask for the walk, like, maybe even as you establish your turn into center. But I wouldn't ask, I didn't, or ask for the walk. He's asking he's asking he has to see. Boy. <laughs> I gotta go, gotta go. He asked about 20 minutes ago for the same thing, but, oh boy. Um, or, you know, pick a cone, you're going to ask for the downward trend to be at. And then next time, pick the opposite cone to ask for the downward So we should never, we need to don't develop a pattern, because then you have a hard time breaking the pattern. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, they're pattern-oriented, for sure. My field looked like it, in, in my old book, like it had veins in it, the patterns that they followed. And this you could even do on the long lines too. You can trot and then halfway around that cone, ask for the walk, walk that, ask for the trot, and then walk this one or keep trotting and walk that. You know, let's pick it up. It doesn't develop the pattern, but you know, you can kind of pick spots. You can even just say, center of that, I'm going to ask him for the walk. So that way you know you're asking for it and he has to actually listen. Now it's important that your body is very clear. Like he knows you're asking for faster because I can feel him change his focus on you. slower than that. Yep, yep. Yeah, he can go slower than that. He's choosing to go kind of more of a trot now. There, right there. It's okay. Now, how fast we get them back up into the trot helps them understand that they weren't supposed to break. But if we change it up and do something totally different, he's not going to know he made a mistake. Now intentionally ask for the walk. Good. So we're going to 
to try to do upward, downward, but not down, downward transition. So we're going to go from the trot to the walk, maintain the walk, back up to the trot, maintain the trot, back down to the walk, maintain the walk. A lot of trainers use backup as punishment. Oh, it's hot. It's hot and he's, what, 19 now? Yeah. Or young 19. Sure. But it's hot. And he's been trotting almost an hour. So you change where your leg was. Well, I, from the horse that I met, who had a lot of arguments with you, I'm finding that he's kind of, without being too obvious about it, kind of enjoying the participation. I don't think that he's hating this. Where when we first started, he was hating having to do anything. But I don't think he's, yeah, I don't think he's hating this time. Yeah, I mean, I would even go as far as wanting to be part of it. Not necessarily like, you know, yeah, not like you have to leave early for the vacation. So he's definitely participating. You're a good guy. Honestly, 
the saddle doesn't matter. I mostly ride best in the um, I just whatever you're most comfortable in. You can make um like a horse that. Yeah, well, like he doesn't he doesn't have as much get up and go, and he prefers this over you know the giddy up stuff. But it doesn't mean that he doesn't have the ability to do the giddy up stuff, or he won't get a hair in his butt to say I, I want to giddy up. But if given a chance, this is more what he wants to do. Um, so you just you, you feel them out for what they get enthusiastic about. Um, and he's happy, like he's got a contentment about him just kind of milling about. Um, Oh, well, I do a lot, if a horse, if I can't get a horse to do any walking, I'll do a lot of change of directions. I'll do a lot of change of directions that involve crossing over. So I wouldn't do like a big, wide figure eight. I would do a very tight figure eight. I'd make them, you know, figure out. Cause what you have to do when a horse gets kind of jittery or gets kind of fiery is to take the fire out of their feet, you have to make them focus on their feet. So crossing over or backing up straight, they don't have to think about their feet. That they're just, they're, instinctually designed to run forward so if you don't get them thinking about his feet then you don't have mental control then when they're jitterbugging you know they have a tendency to not be focused on anything but whatever whatever has caused them whether it's to go back to the barn or something back there upset them you know whatever it was that got it going usually it's to get back to the barn so i would say okay we could go back to the barn but we're gonna go three steps this way two steps that way you know and, and do a lot of until that relaxation from then you can give him the benefit of the doubt that he can just be responsible and walk. If he can't, then say, okay, you want to be fast, let's be fast, but we're not going to go anywhere going fast. You know? And then once he kind of says, all right, well, that's not fun, and say, okay, so then let's try to just do this again. If he gets fiery again, do it again. Eventually, he's going to realize that he's been given the benefit of the doubt or, or being given a chance, and he's going to be like, you know what? This is so much better than just do this. And then he'll stop being goofy. Um, for them to go, oh, oh I, gotta, I gotta get back, and then you can do the work that way. Um, or even at the farthest end of the paddock when they want to be there, you know. Um, pick, pick a place where you feel your soda get shaken, and then work there. You know, and don't get yourself in trouble. Don't take them to the farthest point and then say, okay, we're going to work on this now. You know, you get yourself in trouble there, because then you could shake the soda worse. But if you kind of teach them that you're going to take some of the fizz out of it, then he'll trust you to do that for him.
Those bats would feel good, huh? Come here, Ewood. Come here, Ewood. Come here. You want to go do some stuff to you? <laughs> Try to do him a favor by hosing him down. Or a sweaty horse, either way. Uh, and then the bugs come well, right out of it. The bugs are, I mean, the spray is it's sweat proof. So if I scrape them down enough and spray them, it seems to do okay. You got a net for you. Well, we stayed running today. Yay!